<laughs> uh, okay, just, uh, just for, first of all, Jenny, how, how, look, this is a, a slightly rude question. How loud is your snore? Um, well, it's been measured at its peak at 111 decibels. Which is quite loud, definitely which is loud. A jet plane, low flying jet plane. Which your neighbours three doors away would probably be able to hear. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> people, down the... a point on it. <laughs> <laughs> people down the end of the close, I think, know about it. <laughs> <laughs> but look, you've, you've snored since you were six, I think, haven't you? Yeah, probably a little before. That was the first time I sort of knew about it, when my sister pinched my nose in the night and I asked, what on earth are you doing? And she said, you're snoring really loudly. So that And was... does it come and go, or has, is it every night? Um... It's it's most nights now as I've got older. I think it, it's mm. it's sort of waned a bit um, during my youth and uh, a bit younger. But now I think it's it's most nights. Most and does nights. it wake you up or, or just everybody else in the house? Uh, it sometimes wakes me up. I sometimes does wake it? up with a <laughs> and I think, who's that? And it's me. <laughs> and does it? I mean, does it? Does it hurt? I mean, does it hurt your palate and stuff? I mean, are you no. aware of it? No, yeah. it doesn't hurt at all. But it's. It's always there, and it's always a, a bit of a nuisance, really. Patrick, are there solutions to snoring? I mean, without having to strap on lots of equipment, which you, <laughs> I know you can do. <laughs> yeah, I think, Ben, there's very simple things that we can be using. Uh, the equipment you're talking about there is probably the CPAP machine, which would be more mm. severe snoring. It's for sleep apnea. But we know a few things. We know that if you have nasal congestion and you're more likely to breathe through your mouth, you're twice as likely to have sleep problems. Uh, If you wake up with a dry mouth in the morning, it's an indication that you have your mouth open and you are breathing through it. And if you're breathing through your mouth during sleep, you're not having a good night's sleep. So for 20 years, um, I first came across this, you know, I was in my mid-20s at the time. I had really waking up tired. I had very poor concentration. For me to get through university, I had to study very, very hard. I was a chronic mouth breather with nasal congestion and I came across the work of a Russian doctor at the time. And he said two things. He said, breathe through your nose and breathe less. And uh, I learned how to open up my nose by simply holding my breath. I started breathing through my nose. And then, of course, your nose starts working better for you, as it does. And uh, to open up my nose, you know, in terms of improving the airway, I use a, a device called Mute. And I also use a small paper tape across my lips. And that's what we advocate to thousands of people um, for the last 20 years. We've had clinical trials in terms of reducing snoring and it reduced by 70%. And that's specifically by teaching buteco exercises and nose breathing. So nose breathing is well documented. You know, many of your listeners are totally unaware of it. They're waking up with a dry mouth, Mm. they're waking up tired, and it can, does cause trauma to the upper airways. You know, I think anybody who goes out for a few pints some night, Mm. they wake up the next morning, they've had a night of snoring, and their throat just feels raw and inflamed. And of course, if the throat is raw and inflamed, it's more narrow and turbulence is is greater at that point as well. So, yeah, we really need to protect the airways and the nose does that. But look, um, sellotaping your mouth shut and stuff, I understand that in the short term, but does that then become your natural way of breathing at night time or do you constantly have to do that? Yeah, well, no, to be honest with you, most people will do it for a couple of months. It's based on neuroplasticity. And in order for the brain to form new neural pathways, we want to be doing something for about 60 to 70 days. This whole thing about 21 days that was determined by psychology a few years ago, it's it's not really accepted now because it takes a while for the for the brain to form new new patterns. And breathing through the nose is a pattern. It's an unconscious activity. But yet, Ben, 50 percent of studied children might breed. It has horrendous consequences on these kids. We don't have statistics for adults because it never gets studied. But yet we know in the literature that mouth breathing is a huge risk factor for sleep problems. Jenny, have you tried these? Um, I've tried the mute because I heard about it a few years ago. Um, what is that? Just describe it for me. It's a, it's a small um, thing that it, you insert into your nose. It's like two little circles joined by a little piece in the middle and you insert it into your nose and it opens up your airways. I'm doing demonstrations here with my hands. And <laughs> and it opens it's up your airways. well air- on radio. Well, it's a, yeah. <laughs> I thought it would work well. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a treat. <laughs> and it opens up the airways so more air goes through 
and it certainly worked in that it reduced the level of my snoring, according to my mm. husband. But I hadn't heard about the paper tape, and it's not sellotape on your lips, I hasten no, to No, I know, but I, I, yeah, I'm just <laughs> I know. Yeah, paper yeah. tape, which I'm going to try, and the breathing. As soon as we, after we sat in here this morning, I only met Patrick earlier this morning, and he said to me that I was a heavy breather. So, that's well, <laughs> a very rude thing to say to a lady. For heaven's sake. Like, you're a heavy breather. You're a heavy yeah. breather. Tape up your mouth, and that was it, really. <laughs> but I mean, the, th- the thing is that, that snoring for you is part of you as well. I mean, it's part of who you are. I mean, I. Well, it is. Are you? Are you? Would you? If if I could wave a magic wand or Patrick could, would you stop it today? Yes. Well. Yes, I would. Because it's it's harmful, as Patrick has uh, I think emphasised to you. It's it's harmful in lots of ways, and it's not just mm. it's not just your breathing, it's your mouth, and it's your teeth, and it's all sorts of things. So so and Patrick, I mean, g- given you know Jenny's you know life long at this, do you think that your breathing techniques would would well if not solve it, then at least uh, reduce it? Yeah, I think we we will definitely reduce it and reduce it significantly. Um, she is a heavy breather. Um, as I pointed out, and I, I you, you know, get arrested for that. What do you mean by heavy breathing? That you can notice somebody breathing during rest. So, for instance, if you're with your colleagues, or if you're if you're beside your colleague, and there's a group of people in the room, and the room goes quiet, you may hear one or two people breathing, and their breathing is hard, and you know they may be breathing through the mouth. A mouth breath is very distinctive than the nose breath. Well, if you're breathing hard during the day, you're going to be breathing hard during your sleep because it's going to carry through. And if you breathe hard through a narrow pipe, you create turbulence. And that's what the airway is. And the narrower the pipe, the greater the turbulence. So they're based on two effects. You know, scientifically, it just makes a whole lot of sense. And yes, breathing is an unconscious activity, but our breathing changes. And people with asthma, we know that they have a huge risk of sleep issues. Um, Normal population in around 20% are predisposed to obstructive sleep apnea. With with asthma, it increases up as high as 70%. People with asthma will tend to breathe hard, they overbreathe, and they breathe through the mouth, but not just people with asthma. So, yeah, like, I had two papers published in the American Thoracic Society journals in May of last year looking at children, even with children that improved their sleep indices by getting these kids to breathe through the nose. So, Ben, the mouth, it's just not for breathing. That's where it is. <laughs> Patrick and Jenny, thank you so much. Jenny, you're, I hope your husband's probably listening to that saying, just give her the tape. Yeah, he give is. Her the tape. He is. He's, he's been out and bought some this morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's great to talk to you. Good luck, Jenny. And I mean, you, I, it, sounds, it sounds like uh, Patrick's going to take it on as a challenge. Well, no, but I'm it's pleased. Lo- it's, it's lovely to talk to you both. Thanks and so much. You. Thank, thank you. Ben. Thank you, Ben. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.